Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial where you're going to learn how to build this Tinder profile roasting website using the vision and text to speech API that was just released by OpenAI. So let's go ahead and dive in and show you how this application works. So here's how the Tinder profile roaster works. All you have to do is click upload image and then click the profile image that you'd like to roast. In my case, I'm just going to pick an image from my wedding. And then from there, you just click roast me. And what it's going to do is send off the profile picture over to the vision API where it's going to analyze the picture and come up with a funny witty roast and from there it's going to pass that roast over to the text to speech api to actually create the mp3 file so we can hear the roast in person so let me go ahead and play you the roast for this picture well 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 if it isn't mr dapper and his furry plus one here we have a gentleman who's clearly mistaken a dating profile for a groomsman audition dressed to the nines in a blue suit that screams i've got a corporate job but i'm not a corporate robot he flashes a grin that could sell ice to penguins. So I'm not gonna lie, that roast was pretty awesome. So let me go ahead and show you how we can build this so you can use it yourself. Oh, real quick, I wanna mention that I'm giving away all the source code for this project down in the description below. And I also wanna mention that if you're enjoying this video so far, you're gonna love some of the other AI tutorials that I have on my channel. But enough of that, let's get back to the roasting. Okay, so I've just pulled up the code in the front end website. So let's go ahead and discuss the main things we want to happen. First, we want to allow people to upload a profile picture. Then we want to send that profile picture off to our backend. And from there, we want to be able to download the MP3 file that comes from the backend so that our user can access it. So let's go ahead and walk through the code and show you how this is gonna work. So like I just mentioned, the first thing we're trying to do is upload images to our app. So what we need to do is if you head down here to the HTML portion of our code, you'll notice that I made an upload area. And what this allows you to do is upload any file as long as it's of type image. And whenever you upload an image, it triggers the handle image change function, which is up here. And just to give a little bit more context, what this is doing is it's pulling out all the files that were passed into that input, and then we're converting them to an array. And then we're uploading or adding these images to our set image state. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want to be able to access these images later on when we generate our roast. Okay, cool. So now that we know how to do that, let's dive into the next part, which is going to be actually sending off our images to be roasted. And all of this gets triggered right here inside of this roast image function. So like I just mentioned, what we're trying to do is pass our images to our backend. That way they can get processed by the vision and text to speech API. So here's exactly what we're going to do. First, we're going to convert our images to base 64. And the reason why we do this is if you head over to the Vision API document, you'll notice that there are multiple ways to upload images. The first one is to actually pass a URL. That's what they provide in most of the quick start examples. You can see they just say like, hey, you know, go look at Wikipedia or something. But in our case, we're working locally and we don't want to have to go upload our images to like a CDN or something like that. So what we can do is actually convert our images to the base 64 format, and then we can upload our images just like that. So that's exactly what's happening right over here in this function. We are just mapping through each of our image, and then we are turning each one of these images into a base 64 format. And then we're going to wait for that process to finish just because, you know, some files can be 60 kilobytes up to a few megabytes long. So this can take, this can take a good while to do. All right, cool. Then what we're gonna do from there is prepare the payload that we're going to send off to our backend database. Now, what, we, what you'll notice is all we're gonna do is just pass in our images and the base 64 representation of them. And then finally, what we're going to do is make the API call that's actually going to pass these images to our roast endpoint. This is something that we're gonna cover in just a second, but this is the endpoint that we're going to create. And as you can see, we're just passing up the body of the payload. This is a post because we're passing up data and we're going to let our backend know that we're passing in JSON data. And then this leads us to the third thing that we want to do on the front end. And that is downloading the MP3 that gets sent to us from the back end. And here's how we do that. What we do is we wait for the response to come back and then we check to say, hey, did you give me a valid response? If you didn't, I'm just gonna throw a quick error saying I had trouble generating the audio. And then what this is gonna do is just pop up a little error on the screen. Um, just right here, a little red pop-up would pop up and say, hey, something went wrong. And then what we're gonna do if the download did work properly, we're just gonna say, show a little, another pop-up saying success, everything works. And then what we're going to do is actually download the image to the person's computer locally. So here's basically what's happening. We're going to grab the blob response. Basically, we're just, this is where the MP3 is at. And then what we're going to do is create a new link 
on our web page, we're going to attach this link to an href. Then what we're going to do is say, hey, this is going to be the roast MP3 file. Then, like I said, then we're going to pin that link to the document, click it, and then remove it. So that's just basically how you go about downloading stuff on web pages. So now that we've covered everything on the front end, let's go ahead and hop over to the back end code so you can see how that works as well. So when it comes to the back end code, we want to do four things. First, we want to validate the data that was passed to us. Next, we want to send the images over to the Vision API to generate the text for the roast. Then we want to pass that text that was generated over to the text to speech API to generate that MP3. And then finally, we want to return that MP3 back to the front end. So let's go ahead and walk through each of these four steps. So when it comes to the first validation step, what we're going to do is pull out the images that were sent to us in the request. And like I said, we're assuming that these images are going to be an array of strings. More specifically, we're assuming they're going to be an array of base 64 strings. And then from there, what we're going to do is just some validation to say, hey, do these images exist? And then we're going to make sure that the image array is not empty. If either of those are true, which means that this is an invalid request, we're just going to send back a error code saying uh, status 400, which means the user sent us something wrong. And then we're going to pass a message saying no images found. Fantastic. So what we're going to do if that's valid is we're going to move on to the next step where we're going to start working with the vision API. And here's what we're going to do for this. So the first thing we're going to do is initialize a new open AI client. And the reason I know to do that is because if you head over to the official documentations for the open AI NPM package, you'll see that they have a basic usage example right here. And what they're doing is creating a new open AI client, just like I was doing. However, what you'll notice is they are going ahead and passing in their API key and I'm not. And the reason why is because I've set up my environment variables to go ahead and use that open AI API key. So if I open up my file explorer and pull up the .env file, you'll notice that I have my API key stored right here. And the way I was able to make this is if you head over to your open AI developer platform and you'll go to your API key section, you can come in here and create a new secret. And that's what I did right here. I pulled it right here, made a new key, and then I pasted it over here into my environment variables. So if you're following along in this tutorial, you're definitely going to do the same thing. So let's go back to our example over here and let's actually skip this section real fast and head down here to the chat complete completion section. So this will make more sense. And to be as helpful as possible, let's walk through this line by line. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to the Vision API documentation so we can actually see an example. So let's go line by line. So the first thing you'll notice is we're using the GPT-4 Vision Preview model. And the reason why we're doing that is this is the new model that gives you access to the Vision API to where you can pass in images and the API can actually analyze what's going on in those pictures. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do is set stream to false. So if you're familiar with basically chatting with ChatGPT in general, what you'll notice is ChatGPT will actually send you back text in real time as it's generating the response. That's not what we want to do. In our case, we want to generate the entire roast but, and then move on to the next step. We don't want to stream the response in real time. Okay, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is set up our message array. And what we're going to do for this message array is we are going to pass in all the information from the user. And what you'll notice is this has to be structured in a very specific way. And you can follow the documentation for, for best practices and examples. But the main thing we're gonna do is set up our message from the user, and then we're going to pass in a content array. And this content array is gonna be full of messages. So the first message that we want to pass in the content array is going to be a text, and this is going to be our roast description. So you definitely want to copy this carefully because ChatGPT really, you can't officially do mean roast, but what you can do is basically make like fun of, you know, attributes that can be changed or, you know, in a fun, lighthearted manner. So like I said, you're going to want to copy this entire thing, but what you'll notice is I'm basically saying like, Hey, can, you know, make a rib tickling appraisal. And, um, you know, like I said, if you go all the way to the very end, you'll notice that I say, um, do this in 60 words or less, because if you do it any bigger, the roast is going to be, uh, take way too long to generate. And then the last thing is like, Hey, do this as if you're talking to a friend. So, you know, we don't want to, uh, we chat GPT won't be mean and that's how we get around it. Okay, cool. So that's what we're doing here for setting up the text. And the next thing that you'll notice is what we want to do is actually upload our profile images that we want to analyze. And here's how we go about doing that. We need to actually upload the, the, the profile picture and we have to do it in a specific way. 
we need to say that it's a type of an image URL and actually pass in the image URL. And that's why we're going to go back up to our previous section. And this is how we generate this object, this basically content object. What we're going to do is a map through each one of our images. And we are going to basically add, you know, we're going to copy this format right here where we have the type is image URL, same thing over here. But what you'll notice is they're pointing to an actual URL. And if you remember from earlier, we're doing everything in base 64. So it's completely okay if you actually go back down to their example here to pass in their base 64 example, just like this. And that's what we're doing right here. Okay, cool. So this is everything that you need to send off the messages. And the very final thing that I want us to add in this chat completion section is maximum tokens. So what you'll notice right out the gate, like if you hover over this, is this is the maximum number of tokens that uh, ChatGPT is allowed to use. So if you don't add this, I've noticed I get a lot of issues with it only generating, you know, maybe 20 words or 15 words. And I think it's because you exceed the token limit. So I found just using 300 tokens is more than enough. This is what they recommend in some of their examples. And anytime I've done 300 tokens, it's completely worked for me. But just as a heads up, if you ever run into issues, you might want to bump up your max token limit uh, to prevent getting cut off or truncated as you go. Okay, cool. So this is actually everything you need to go ahead and send off our profile pictures to be roasted. So let's go ahead and hop into the next step where we're going to gather that message that gets sent back to us so that we can use it and generate our new MP3. So when it comes to pulling out messages from the Vision API, the best place to look for examples is actually in the documents. So if you head over here um, and what you'll notice is I'm pulling up the chat references because we're holding a chat conversation with the Vision API. And you'll notice whenever you send an image input, it has a expected demo response. So in our case, what you'll notice, we're gonna do these side by side so you can see exactly what's going on. But what you'll notice is in the response, we want to look at the choices property and it's an array and we want to grab the first element from this array. That's why we have zero. Then we want to grab the message property and inside of that message property, we want to grab the content. And this is actually where the roast is going to be living in. So this is why we're accessing it this way. And then what we're going to do is just to make sure nothing went wrong, we're going to check to make sure that that AI message exists. And if it doesn't, we're going to return back with a status of 500 saying, hey, something happened wrong in the server and you need to, you know, show an error message to the user. Okay, cool. So now we're in the part of the tutorial where we're going to start sending off our roast to the audio portion where we're going to generate our text and convert it over to speech. So let's walk through this line by line. And I'm also going to pull up the formal documentation so we can see what OpenAI is saying as well. All right. So right out the get go, what we're doing is once again, working with our open AI client that we had just a few seconds ago, except this time we're working with the speech library and we're creating a new speech. In our case, we're going to save it to our roast MP3. All right. So now it's going through the different properties and configurations that we can set up. So the first thing that you'll notice is we're setting up the model and looking at the documentation, there's two different types of models that you can use text to speech one, which is like the normal one. And then text to speech one, HD, which is the high def one. So what you'll notice is, you know, a lot of people actually really can't tell the difference between the two. Uh, I haven't really heard the difference whenever I've listened to it, but what you'll, um, according to the documentation, what you'll notice is they say the normal text to speech one is uh, faster when it comes to making generating new MP3 files compared to the high def, just with however they render new, new MP3 files. However, what I've seen on Twitter and other places is that so many people are using the normal text to speech model that it's basically overwhelmed. So actually some people are getting faster results using the high def model. So do something to pay attention to try it, uh, try it yourself and see which one you like. Okay, cool. So then what I want to do next is actually show you guys the different voices that you can use. So I'm going to play these out so you guys can hear them all real fast, just so you can see what the different voice options are. So let's go ahead and go. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. In the heart of the city, there is a large park where people go to relax. The library is a quiet and peaceful place where people go to read. The train chugged along the tracks, carrying passengers to their destinations. In the kitchen, the aroma of freshly baked bread filled the air. The beach was a popular spot on a hot summer day. But yeah, that's pretty cool that uh, OpenAI gives you that many different options. And as time goes on, they're only going to give you more options. But for our case, we're just going to use Shimmer. That was the one that I liked. And then what you'll notice next is we have two more things that we need to set up. 
First, we have to set up the input, the text input that we want to use for our text to speech model. So that's going to be our AI message that we pulled from our previous model. And the final thing that we're gonna do is set up the default response format. So in our case, we're going to use the MP3 format. All right, cool. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna take anywhere from, like I say, probably, depending on how long our message is gonna be, anywhere from like maybe three to 10 seconds because we're gonna generate the entire text and convert it into a single MP3. So it's gonna take a little bit. All right, cool. So once this gets done creating our MP3 file, let me walk you through how we're going to send our audio file back to our front end. So the first thing we want to do is convert our MP3 over to a buffer. And the reason why we want to do that is because buffers are basically just raw binary data and Node.js makes it very easy to handle transferring raw buffers from the back end to the front end. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is prepare our response that we're going to be sending back to the front end. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to set up a header to say, hey, front end, whenever you receive this, you should expect a content type of basically an MP3. And I'm also gonna pass you back an attachment. And just by default, I recommend calling this attachment a roast MP3. And then from there, we're just gonna go ahead and actually send back that one massive buffer of raw data. Okay, cool. So that's how everything works on the back end. So now that we've ran through all the steps and coded everything up, let's just run back through the application one more time just so we can tie everything together. All right, cool. So right out the gate, what we're gonna do is upload images. And this is how we manage state once a person uploads their picture we're going to save this image from there what we're going to do is click roast me and that's going to trigger our roast me function which is going to send this picture off to our back end our back end is going to validate to make sure it got the picture from there it's going to send that picture over to the vision api where it's going to inspect what was happening inside the picture from there it's going to turn that roast over to the text-to-speech model where it's actually going to describe what it sees in there and then finally we're going to get back the roast like we just did. So I'm going to go ahead and play it real fast just so y'all can hear it and the final version. Ah, Mr. Charming has wooed us not with roses or chocolates but with Fido's dapper bow tie flair. Now that's a wingman. His suit game, crisp, his smile sparks fly and that canine sidekick's poker face, priceless. But yeah, that's an overview of the entire app. But that's a wrap for this video, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed this Tinder profile roasting app where y'all got to learn about the Vision API and Text-to-Speech API. And if you did enjoy this tutorial, I'm sure you'll love the other AI tutorials that I have on my channel. So be sure to go ahead and check those out right after this. Y'all have a great day and see y'all in the next one. Bye.